All right, so we're going to start on chapter six, intermolecular forces. Let's look at liquids for a moment. If we think about liquids, the molecules within them are always tumbling around each other, okay? It's like a group of fans at a concert jostling around. And so you have this sort of a random walk about which way any particular one is going. And ultimately, it leaves us with a question. Why does this stay a liquid? They've got energy. They're moving about. What is keeping these molecules in contact with each other instead of just dispersing and becoming a gas? So the first point is about intermolecular forces. Where do they come from, right? We're talking about a Coulomb interaction. This is energy that is due to the charges. So if we have things that are charged, we can see from this equation that we're going to come up with a certain amount of energy involved. And it, we would have to, depending on whether it's positive or negative, it's either going to be trying to drive them apart or keep them together. This amount then is going to be determined by both the charges and the distance between the charges. All right, well, that's nice and all. It's kind of confusing. I have a star on here. My star must mean something. So let's think about star number one. Star one is simply saying that the energy has to be put together in such a way that we have newton meters, in other words, joules. So if you look at these, you find out that Q is actually in coulombs and R's in meters, but the meters are in the denominator instead of in the numerator. So this epsilon naught has to do a lot of work in order to cancel out all of the various units. If you look it up, you'll find out there's a nice value for it that's like, okay leading you to more things that you're wondering about, because what is a farad? <laughs> but if you go and you look through all of the units, you'll find out that it will all cancel out, and you will end up with joules for this EP, will end up being in joules. Now, on the macroscopic scale, temperature helps give you an idea of how strong these attractive forces are. If the temperature is low at the boiling point, it means the attractive forces are also low. If you have to go to a high temperature in order to boil something, it means that the attractive forces are very high, they're keeping it together longer. The things have to have more energy before they can get away. So boiling point is a macroscopic indicator, and so are a couple of other properties, viscosity and surface tension. Those tell you a lot about the attractive forces. You'd learn a lot more about those in Chem 10.